good Sunday morning, YouTube. It's Sunday, June the 27th, 2021. I'm headed out to a no cooling call. Oh, it looks like we got a branch that fell off right there off that tree on our little road. Um, I'm headed to a no cooling call. They called early this morning and said the unit was freezing so they turned it off and turned the fan on on obviously they've been through this before because they knew to do that without me even having to tell them they said they were going to church and she would text me when they were almost home from church and I got the text about 10 minutes ago that they were home from church so I'm headed that way to go see what we got again she said it's freezing up so we're gonna go see if we can uh do something for them and see if we can uh bring you guys along we're in the attic as you can see we have a 2010 rude cubed unit attached to a 06 Goodman air handler R22 refrigerant only. It is an R22 condenser. Multiple single runs with a very short plenum and a 18 inch return duct with no return air plenum. Uh, the refrigerant pressures check out. I'm thinking we might have a weak capacitor or something causing this fan to drop out. It's a 15 microfarad. There you go. Let's see. That one goes by itself. And then purple. Purple and skinny brown go together. Looking for 15, we have it. Well, we have 13.96, that's close enough. So, we 
why this thing froze up. I still don't know. The blower had to stop for some reason. Okay, so as you saw, the capacitor checks out. The blower relay, I tapped on it a few times. It doesn't seem like it's sticking. Somebody has overcharged the dog piss out of this unit. They told me that they did have somebody charge it up last summer. Another suspicion that I have here is a sticking contactor. I'm gonna see if uh, the contactor looks like it's sticking. Disconnect to do this so I don't shock the shit out of my stuff. Okay. So I have a thermostat screwdriver here in my pocket. I'm going to pull this little cover off. And see what these points look like. head in here to see what these points look like let's pull one of the low voltage wires off it came undone the contactor doesn't doesn't look bad at all I mean, it's got a little bit of pitting on it, but. You can hear it. It's definitely releasing. Yeah, it's not the contactor. No. It's not the contactor. I really feel like if it was the contactor, uh, it would have stuck for me right there. Okay, I'm gonna turn this thing back on. Extremely low a second ago. I really think somebody has overcharged this unit. He said they had it charged up last year. Not that that would cause it to freeze, but as far as causing it to freeze, I'll have to catch that in the act. Guys, that fan blade is spinning much faster than that. Keep in mind that is the camera that makes it look like that. It's only 30 frames per second, but that fan blade is really moving. So, we're gonna see see that high sub cooling, and this thing's not dirty. The coal's not dirty at all. I think somebody overcharges unit, which doesn't explain the freezing. But uh, they know that the unit they bought the house two years ago. They know that this is 10 years old and it's 15 years old in the attic. So we're we're actually already started speaking about updating the system. 
and they, they've had to have another guy come out and charge it. Uh, they said they may possibly just let me do a leak search and verify that that Goodman coil is leaking and just change out the Goodman coil for right now and then maybe this fall do the system, which I don't think is a very smart move. I think they should just let it ride like this for the summer, gas it up. If they're planning on changing the system in the fall, I would just wait and I'm gonna tell them that. But see, our superheat is back down to a degree. So that's flooding liquid. So we're gonna have to remove some of this charge, bring that superheat up a little bit. So I removed a little bit of gas and I like this superheat much better. Uh, that's not flooding liquid back. It is a piston upstairs. I like that superheat much better. That makes me feel more comfortable because we're not flooding liquid back. Um, I mean, it, it's cooling right now. I mean, it's it's the heat that's coming out of here is just ridiculous. Really good heat. And uh, it, you can feel it cooling in the house when you walk in there. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to leave them with it. And I'm going to tell them that if it freezes, because I don't live far from here. I live about 10 minutes away from them. And I'm going to tell them if it freezes up again today to not turn it off. Leave it on and let me see it in the act so that I can see, you know, it's got to be the blower stopping. Is the blower overheating and stopping? Is the, We saw that the capacitor was good. Is the blower relay in those Goodman air handlers going out? You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a parts changer. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to replace a relay board without knowing for sure. Um, maybe it was a fluke. I don't know. But until I can properly diagnose, um, I'm going to leave the system as it is, and I'm going to tell them if it freezes again to call me immediately. All right, guys, well, you know, sometimes you get those kind of calls where the customer says it was freezing. I have no doubt that the unit froze up. So basically, I, these are the things that I ruled out. I ruled out that the contactor was sticking. I ruled out low charge. And I ruled out at the moment a sticking relay on that little relay board that Goodman has. You know, sometimes those relays, they'll open on demand, sometimes, or close on demand, I should say, and sometimes they won't. They'll just stay open and it won't turn the blower motor on. I tapped on the relay to try to get it to act up. It didn't act up. I have those Goodman blower boards in my truck because they're very, they're, they're very prone to failure. We have an ambulance here. Um, I just wasn't gonna change that board, you know, without proof. Now the only thing, and I checked the capacitor, y'all all saw the capacitor was a hair weak, it was like 13.9, but that is not enough for the blower motor not to come on. So the only other thing that I could think is happening is the blower motor is running a little while, maybe overheating and shutting down. I told her to watch the unit today. If it freezes up again, do not turn it off. Leave it on, call me immediately, so I can run over there and catch the problem as it is happening. And she said, no problem. Uh, her and her husband said, no problem. I don't have a diagnosis at this point, but they, I, they know that the unit in the attic is fif, uh, 15 years old and the outdoor unit is 10. So we're gonna price out a 14 sear system, a 16 sear system, both ream, and then we're going to price out a comfort maker variable inverter system because I do not trust the ream inverters. And I will give them those three options. And then tomorrow, they want me to come uh, run the leak detector. I just, it's Sunday. I didn't feel like doing it today. I don't mind working on Sundays. I don't charge overtime on Saturdays because working on a Saturday literally does not bother me at all. But if I don't have to work on a Sunday, I don't, I'm not going to. But if somebody is willing to pay my Sunday overtime fee, I will go. 
I don't charge overtime on Saturdays, but I do charge it on Sundays. So on Sundays, I do charge an overtime fee. They were willing to pay it. So I went out, but I wasn't going to do a leak search on a Sunday. Um, I'm going to, and once I verify that the Goodman coil is leaking, I'm going to quote them a new coil, go ahead and put a new relay board on it, a new capacitor on the blower motor, and go ahead and change the contactor on the outdoor unit, check the capacitor on the outdoor unit, and possibly go ahead and change it too. I told them if they decide to go that route, which I told them I didn't recommend, but I said, if y'all decide to go that route, you know, y'all need to at least hold on to the system for another year or two. I said, doing all that work and then changing it this fall is a total waste of money. And they agreed, so they want to look at all the options. So we're going to quote it out for them. Um, a lot of you may not agree you know, with me quoting out uh, the coil, the blower board, a uh, capacitor for the blower and all that, but that's what the customer wants. That's what I'm gonna give the customer. But I look forward to seeing your comments down below. As I get an update on this system and if I get an approval on one of the jobs, um, or if we end up doing the repair work, I'll, feel, I'll try to film it. I'll try to film, I don't really film change outs anymore, guys. It's kind of hard to film a change out, but maybe I can do like Ted does and you know, kind of film a before and after, you know, which y'all kind of just saw. But if we do a change out, we're gonna change out the supply plenum from a four footer to an eight footer because they have 11 duct runs. Uh, four foot plenum's just not long enough for the air to mix with that many runs. So I'm gonna swap it to an eight footer. And then they got an 18 inch duct coming off the back with no return plenum. We'll put a two foot return plenum and put a 18 inch starting collar and tie it in that way. And we may even put in a five inch media filter because um, they have a, young, a two year old daughter, it's their first child. And we're also gonna look at a UV light. That all will be, uh, will be incorporated into the quote. So we'll see what they wanna do and I'll try to update you guys on the next live stream or in a different video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.